Hey, what's up, nerds? Welcome to another weekly Math Hammer. So I wanted to get back to basics. Um, I haven't done a basic Math Hammer video in a really long time, so I wanted to revisit it. I've thought of some new ways to explain things to people. Um, I've had to do some proofs out for people in comments and such in the past, so I wanted to kind of throw that in here. Um, got a new channel, so I wanted to get a new start on Math Hammer and reintroduce some of the basic concepts to new subscribers uh, that may not have seen it before, as well as new players that this might be totally new to. So, uh, Age of Sigmar is a dice game. So, statistics and probability are your friend. You need to understand these things in order to actually properly judge the performance of what's going to happen. Compared to our prior editions of Warhammer, we're a lot more simple and a lot more reliable than we used to be, since we're no longer comparing our stats to our defending uh, unit stats. So our hit and wound rolls are generally very reliable. We know what they're going to be ahead of time. There's a lot less things that modify your hit and wound rolls, as well as your safe rolls. So the basics here, uh, we're using six-sided dice, so any result has a 1 in 6 odds of occurring, or 16.67%. And you can see, as we go uh, down the chain, you're just incrementing up that 16 and 2 thirds each time, uh, with each pip you add to the dice. Our general attack profiles are our number of attacks times our odds to hit, times our odds to wound, times damage. Uh, and it's the same for missile weapons and melee weapons. I didn't want to throw in the complication of rend and saving throws in here. Uh, I just wanted to keep this super basic, Math Hammer 101. We can talk about rend at a later date and the effect of your opponent's saving throws. Um... But, needless to say, this is the very basics that you need to know. So, whole number times a fraction times a fraction times another whole number equals how much damage you can expect to do. These are our three most common attack profiles. Now, these are very, very useful to memorize uh, what your actual odds are. So important to note here uh, in our middle example that the commutative property applies here. That because we're multiplying a 3-up times a 4-up or a 4-up times a 3-up gives you the same result. Um, and there's, you know, given law of large numbers, there is some difference here. Uh, but they're effectively the same uh, for most purposes unless you're really getting into something more complicated. So, 4 up, 4 up, 50% times 50%, 25%, fours and threes, or threes and fours is going to give you 33%, or one third. And threes and threes is going to give you 44.44444%, um, or as I always shortcut it in my head, eh, a little less than half. Um, I think that's basically kind of what they were going for mathematically with that, was to have it be a little bit less than half, or about half, was uh, the general idea. So, buffing your stats. This is one that you always care about. This is just sort of the rank order of how good these things generally are. Um, adding an attack or damage is usually your best thing you can do. Rerolling all fails comes in second. In third, plus one to hit or wound is generally uh, also very powerful. Um, and not to be understated, and this is probably like the most common buff that you're going to see around is a plus one to hit or plus one to wound. Uh, and in last is our rerolling ones. Um, I see a lot of people that get really excited about rerolling ones, and I think it is completely unjustified. It is probably the worst buff that you can give to something in the game, and I'll be explaining that a little bit further on, but that's just kind of the basics here. 
So rerolling fails. Let's break out our algebra for a second. It is your odds of success plus your odds of success times your odds of failure. So it's basically taking your odds of failure and giving you another bite at the apple and adding that to your odds of success. So you can see here your re-roll of a three up brings you from a two-thirds chance to about a 90% chance. Pretty close to 90%, 88.89%. That's a pretty big deal. Rerolling everything is really, really powerful. Uh, and as, again, I'm going to explain this a little bit later, later on, but in general, rerolls get more powerful as your odds of a success get better. So re-rolling all three pluses is way better than re-rolling on six pluses. Um, but I digress a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to just demonstrate the power of how good that is. Uh, adding ones to hit or wound. Um, so this is generally better on a weaker roll. As your hit or wound is more powerful, the less buffing it is with a plus one to hit or wound is going to do for you. So a six up to a five up doubles the amount of successes you have. You go from one in six to two in six. Uh, so you're, you know, you're doubling that. A four up to a three up though is only improving by a third. There were three options on a four up that were a success and you're increasing that by one to four options that are a success. So a 33% improvement, not as powerful as five up to six up still really good. Nothing to scoff at, uh, but it always should be noted that it is generally better to buff a weaker thing. And just to do out that proof, because I have had people argue this with me before. Basic profile example. Three up, four up. 33% odds of success. Adding one to hit, 44.44%. And then if we do out that at plus one to wound instead, it's 41.67%. So plus one to hit on the worst stat, the four up, gives you a better overall improvement. Better overall odds. And finally, a word on re-rolling ones. This always improves your odds by 16.67%. Because it's just 1 in 6 times your odds of success plus your odds of success. So, again, this gets better as your hit rolls get better. Uh, re-rolling ones on a six up takes it from 16 and two thirds to 19 and a half. So that's a pretty good increment up, but, uh, <coughs> you know, barely noticeable sometimes. Um, a two up re-rolling goes from 83% to 97%. And you can see where it starts to matter when things Reroll. This is why you can see the major difference here for the players that are just like not new to Age of Sigmar that are seeing the difference between uh, the old Mystic Shield and the new Mystic Shield. Going from plus one to save to rerolling failed ones is a massive whack. Like it is like Mystic Shield is no longer a good spell, and I think the casting value should probably go down as well. But Mystic Shield before was probably overpowered and maybe needed a higher casting value. I don't know. Anyway, that's just sort of the very basics that I wanted to go over for folks, just so that we kind of had that out there. Um, if anybody has any more questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments as always. And I'm going to try and do some more basic Math Hammer videos uh, and rehash some older things to um, help people understand the concepts that I talk about in the more advanced Math Hammer videos and so that we have a decent reference um, here. And if anybody has any questions, as always, I'm...
If you have a specific question that you'd like me to do a video on, uh, feel free to drop that down in the comments as well. I am always looking for suggestions, always looking for things that people are interested in hearing the math side about. So, without further ado, I'll talk to you all later.